is Darian and today we are going to be doing a book haul. So you may have noticed I haven't really uploaded in a while. The last video I uploaded was my birthday book haul which was over a month ago but here I am with another book haul. <laughs> um, I've decided to try to haul all the books that I've gotten so far this year besides the ones that were in that birthday book haul. Now I don't know how accurate this is going to be. There may be some books that I got like at the end of 2022. There may be some books I've already mentioned before or there may be some books that I'm forgetting. I'm just doing my best here because <laughs> we have a lot of books to talk about. I haven't counted them but there's a lot. So yeah, but just to quickly give you guys an update on where I've been, I am currently filming a vlog where I go into detail about what's been going on in my life lately. So if you want a detailed update, stay tuned for that vlog. But basically, rapid fire, um, grad school has been crazy. I'm in grad school, if you didn't know, to be a librarian. It's been crazy. My mental health has not been great lately, and I just haven't had the energy or time to film any videos. But I am done my semester now. So hopefully I will have a bit more time to do videos. We had a huge ice storm where I live and I lost power for three days and that was horrible. <laughs> um, I'm having war flashbacks now. I got a new job. I'm starting a new job at the beginning of May working at a library and that, that was very exciting but also I'm very stressed but it's fine. And yeah, I think those are the major updates. So. That's where I've been, that's what's been going on, and I guess we'll just get into the book haul. Oh, also, I should mention, <laughs> I'm not clearly in my room right now, I'm actually in my basement because I have these two new bookshelves that my mom bought for me and then my boyfriend built for me, which was very nice of both of them. But uh, as you can see, they're quite empty. There are like a few above, but I haven't organized it yet. I will be doing a bookshelf organization video, don't you worry. I just haven't had time, but now I'm done school, so I will figure that out soon. But yeah, so these are some new shelves, and I'm filming down here because most of the books that I have to haul, I just kind of brought down here, and I didn't want to bring them all upstairs, so I'm filming down here in front of the new shelves, even though there's nothing on them, but it's fine. So without further ado, I don't know how to do this anymore. Without further ado, let's just get into this book haul. There is really no rhyme or reason to the order that I'm going to show you these books in. I, I'll try to remember where I got them from, but bear with me. Also, since there's a lot of books to get through, I'm not going to go into detail about what these are about. I'm just going to show them to you and maybe tell you what I know about them. I don't know. So I have my stacks here. We're just going to first one, top of the stack. Pack of the Moon by Kristen Higgins and all I know about this book is that it's sad. It's made everyone cry. My best friend Salma read this recently and she sobbed and all I know is that it makes people sob. Also this is like very floppy and I love it um, but I don't know what it's about. A couple, oh one of them is dying. <laughs> That's not great. So can't wait to read this and cry. Many hours later. Okay, so if things look different, it's because they are. It's a few <laughs> it's a few hours later, uh, my battery died and then I had to go to an appointment and I also spilled stuff on my shirt, so I had to change. But we're back to talk about these books. Things are going great so far. We've gotten through exactly one book, but I have coffee now, so. The next book I'm going to talk about is very exciting and I'm upset at myself that I have not read this yet because I can't believe I have it in my possession and I haven't read it yet but it's fine there's still time but that is Yellow Face by RF Kuang. If you guys don't know I currently work at an independent bookstore and we often get ARCs for the employees and we could just take them and I saw this sitting in the pile one day and I I snatched her up real quick. So this is RF Kuang's next release and it's very different from what she's written so far. This is like a, what genre do you even classify this as? It's like literary fiction but it's a satire and it's a like commentary on the publishing industry. I think it's gonna be really fun but also really smart. She's like, no one is smarter than RF Kwong honestly, like let's be real. So I think it's just gonna be amazingly written and really funny, but also a really good look at the publishing industry and everything that's wrong with it. And I think it's just gonna be great and I'm very excited. I'm hoping to get to this this month, but we'll see, so yeah. Then we have Ties That Tether by Jane Igaro and I think this is a romance and it's about uh, a Nigerian woman who, oh my God, she lives in Canada? 
We love that. But she is Nigerian and I think she falls for a white guy and so she's a bit nervous about how her family will react to that. And I've heard amazing things about this book so I'm very excited. Plus this cover is just stunning. So very excited to get to this one. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure why I picked this up because I really had, I do not remember anything about what this is about, but so, for some reason it just kind of called to me and that is Sam by Allegra Goodman. Let's read a bit of the synopsis where, okay, it just doesn't really say the synopsis. It just says the simplicity of this tender, emotionally honest novel is what makes it so powerful. Allegra Goodman's spare sentences and subtle observations belie... <laughs> belie vital reflections on class, parenthood, desire, and the irrepressible power of dreams. Sam will break your heart but will also leave you full of hope. So like what is it about? I don't know. But if it's gonna break my heart then I want to read it. So I don't know. Also Jenna, Jenna likes it. So. so the next book I picked up again from my work but this was kind of a birthday present to myself. I wanted something pretty and so I got this beautiful edition of The Great Gatsby. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Yes. It is so pretty. Um, I've only read The Great Gatsby once in high school, but I think it's my favorite classic. It's hard. It's hard. But I think right now, I would need to reread it, but I think it is my favorite classic and that mainly has to do with my teacher when I read this book. She was obsessed with this book and so she made it so much fun to read this and discuss it in class. And so I don't know if I would have liked the book as much if I didn't read it with her, but she just gave me like this love for this book. So I'm excited to revisit it and maybe I, I don't know, it's too pretty to tab I think, but maybe I'll annotate it. I don't know. It's just really pretty and I'm really happy I own it. <laughs> okay, next I have a feeling I showed this in a vlog maybe, so maybe I didn't pick this up in 2023, but I'm going to show it anyways. I don't know. But that is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. Obviously this is an arc. Have I read anything by Chloe Gong? I have not, um, but again I got this through my work and I know she's a very popular author. I think this is her adult fantasy debut. Adult epic fantasy debut. <laughs> oh, inspired by Antony and Cleopatra. I love that. So it's going to be great, I think. I do own these Violent Delights and what is that other one called? Our... No, what is it called? The one that's like kind of pink, you know? Oh my god, what is it called? I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> but I do own two of her books that I have not read yet, but I have this one now too. So when does this come out? It says July. So I have until July to read this. Will I get it done in time? Who knows? Okay, while we're talking about arcs, I have a few other ones here. So this one is The Light of Eternal Spring by Angel D. Zhang, and this comes out at the end of April, so it's pretty safe to say I will not get to this in time, but intensely cinematic debut novel travels from the streets of New York City to Northeast China on the trail of a young photographer who needs to reconcile with her dead mother before she is able to see the world again. And it's very short, so that's always good, but I don't know, something about this just kind of intrigued me. I love the cover. We'll see. I don't know. Another arc we have Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach, <laughs> which comes out in June. This is another like Greek mythology retelling. A lot of those have been coming out lately, but I had a feeling this was going to be one that would be really popular, so I was like, might as well pick up that arc. Also I saw, I think it was Ashley from A Frolic Through Fix. She read this recently and really loved it, so that made me more excited to read it. But who does this follow? Young Morgan of Cornwall. Blah 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 blah. I don't know anything about her story. So it should be, should be good. Should be interesting. I don't know. Okay, next we have The Only Survivors by Megan Miranda. I'm pretty sure this comes out soon. If not, yeah, it came out the other day. <laughs> But this is Megan Miranda's newest book. She is a mystery thriller writer. I've read two of her books now. I've read, um, what is it called? All the Missing Girls, which I really liked. And then I recently read The Last House Guest, which I really did not like. So I don't know. I think this is just, ooh, seven hours in the past, seven days in the present, seven survivors remaining. Who would you save? Okay, wait. <laughs> 
a decade ago, two vans filled with high school seniors on a school service trip crashed into a Tennessee ravine, a tragedy that claimed the lives of multiple classmates and teachers. The nine students who managed to escape the river that night were irrevocably changed. Or is it irrevocably? <laughs> I always say irrevocably in my head, but I think it's actually irrevocably. Irrevocably. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, a year later, after one of the survivors dies by suicide on the anniversary of the crash, the rest of them make a pact to come together each year to commemorate that terrible night, to keep one another safe, to hold each other accountable, or both. Their annual meeting place, a house on the Outer Banks. Isn't that a show? Outer Banks? I think it is. <laughs> has long been a refuge. But by the 10th anniversary, Cassidy Bend has worked to... Uh, have you ever noticed? I feel like there's so many... <laughs> thriller protagonist named Cassidy or Cassie. I feel like that's such a like thriller protagonist name. I don't know. Anyways, has worked to distance herself from the tragedy and from the other survivors. She's changed her mobile number. She's blocked the other's email addresses. This year she is determined to finally break ties once and for all. But on the day of the reunion, she receives a text with an obituary attached. Another survivor is gone. Now they are seven and Cassidy finds herself hurtling back towards the group, wild with grief and suspicion. I think I don't want to read more. I don't want to spoil myself, but I mean, it sounds intriguing. I find all of her plots sound intriguing, but I don't know. I was kind of let down by the last house guest, so we'll see how this one goes. Okay, let's do this one next. So the next one is a book I picked up at the beginning of the year with one of my chapters gift cards that I got for Christmas, but this is Friday I'm in Love by Cameron Garrett. Look at this cover. It is stunning. I believe it is about this girl who I think she, yeah, for her sweet 16, she wants to have like a coming out party um something like that but first of all this cover is stunning i also really love cameron garrett's writing i read full disclosure a couple years ago and i really love that book so i'm very excited to get to this one then we have another beautiful cover that is a magic steeped in poison look at this it's so pretty by judy i lynn <laughs> i don't even know what this is about but like i saw this at indigo and i was like you're coming home with me but i think it's a retelling of something but maybe it's not yeah i honestly don't know what this is about i know it's ya and it's fantasy and i love ya fantasy and the cover is really pretty so what else was i supposed to do i don't know the next book is one i've been eyeing for a while i think it came out in 2020 but that is gear breakers by zoe hannah makuda and again do i know what this is about not really i know it's ya and i think it's sci-fi i mean it definitely looks sci-fi to me but i think it's also sapphic which we love so this is also another kind of cover buy because i love this cover i think i remember when this came out people really liked it i haven't heard much about it since then but it does have a sequel so maybe if i like this one i'll just keep reading them i don't know if it's a duology i don't know i really don't know but i love this cover <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, next, surprise, surprise, we have another beautiful cover, but that is As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. And <laughs> do I know what this is about? Not really, but it is YA and I'll read a bit. It says, this is my land and just like the lemon trees that have been growing here for centuries, spilled blood won't stop us. Salama Kassab was a pharmacy student when the cries for freedom broke out in Syria. She still had her parents and her big brother. She still had her home and an average teenager's life. Now Salama vo volunteers at a hospital in Homs, helping the wounded who flood through the doors daily. Secretly though, she is desperate to find a way out of her beloved count uh, country before her best friend and sister-in-law Layla gives birth. As her desperation grows, her PTSD takes physical shape in the form of companion Kof, who haunts her every move. <laughs> Oh my god, that sounds... Uh, it sounds like it's gonna make me cry. It has so many blurbs on the back. So about to hear blurb this? That's all I need to know. It just sounds amazing. I've heard really good things about this, so let's all say it together. I'm very excited to read this. Okay, which pile? Let's go with this over here. Next we have The Boy with the Bookstore, which honestly... Oh, it's by Sarah Echavare Smith. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but I, I'd never heard of this, but I saw it at Indigo and I was like, you know what? Sometimes we just need a silly, goofy read and this looks cute. It's about books. I mean, the boy in the bookstore, like, what more do you want? <laughs> but it says here, when a baker meets the bookshop owner of her dreams and he turns it into her nemesis, they'll both have to read between the lines to avoid a career ending recipe for disaster. Like baking and books, 
What more do you want? Just make him grumpy and that'll be my fur and that'll be my perfect book. Is he grumpy? <gasps> she has a hamster named Pumpkin. <gasps> her gallant prince turns out to be a stubborn toad who snaps at her in front of customers, dries his wet clothes in her oven, and helps himself to the yummy pastries in her display case without asking. Between but beneath Max's grumpy glares. <laughs> Joel senses a rising heat and a softening heart. Oh my god, he's grumpy. Okay, so very excited. <laughs> that just made me 10 times more excited for this. But yeah, sometimes you just need silly goofy romance to get you through the day, you know? Next we have, I'm pretty sure this is a sci-fi but is light from Uncommon Stars by Rika Aoki. This cover, again, very beautiful. Love the fish. Um, what is it about? I'm pretty sure the main character is trans. Yes, Katrina Nguyen. A young transgender runaway catches Shizuka's ear with her wild talent. Something about a curse. A donut shop. <laughs> I'm learning so much about these books. I don't know, but I've heard good things and I'm excited. Oh, my leg is falling asleep. I forgot how hard it is to film sitting on the floor. I used to do this all the time. Okay, the next book is The Wolf of Oranyaro by K.S. Viloso. And this was kind of a gift from my brother, but he's already read this and he was gonna give it away so I just took it so was it really a gift not really but again I don't know what this is about I'm pretty sure it's fantasy and I'm pretty sure she's known as like the bitch queen and I know Casey like really loved especially this first book I think so that's all I really needed to know <laughs> before agreeing to getting this but I mean my brother was gonna give it away so I was like I might as well just take it and I'll read it whenever I get to it. I don't know. So these next two books are from Jan, from Jan Agaton. So thank you very much, Jan. But she sent me two books after I participated in her 24 hour readathon back in, I think it was January. But she sent me Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. And she sent me Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. So two very different books. This is like literary fiction. Um, and it's about these two people and about their lives and how they navigate the world as two black people. And I've heard it's very uh, devastating, so can't wait. And then this one is just a silly, goofy YA mystery. A lot of people like Audrey and I wanna say Thomas <laughs> is his name. This is like a classic YA series that everyone has read except for me. So I'm excited to get to these two. So thank you very much, Jan, for these ones. <sighs> I'm so tired. Okay, <laughs> next we have The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. This was actually on my March TBR, but surprise, surprise, I did not get to it. But this sounds so interesting. It follows this uh, independent bookstore in Minneapolis, which is haunted by the store's most annoying customer. And so it says Flora dies on All Souls Day, but she simply won't leave the store. Tuki, who has landed a job selling books after years of incarceration that she survived by reading with murderous attention, must solve the mystery of this haunting while at the same time trying to understand all that occurs in Minneapolis during a year of grief, astonishment, isolation, and furious reckoning. So I think this takes place like during the beginning of the pandemic also. And I think that's what it means when it talks about a year of grief, astonishment, isolation. I like this just sounds so unique and interesting. And I've heard a lot about Louise Erdrich as a author. So I'm excited to check out her work. Okay. Next, we have Someone Who Will Love You in All Your Damaged Glory by Raphael Bob Waksberg. This is the cover, who is also the creator of Bojack Horseman. Now, if you know anything about me, Bojack Horseman is one of my favorite shows of all time, probably in my top three. Would we say that? Definitely my top five, but it, I think top three. Anyways, <laughs> I think I would say top three, but it's just one of my, it's just that show like weirdly gives me comfort even though it's so devastating but that show just gets me as a person you know so anyways i love that show so much i love the writing and so i thought it'd be really neat to read this book written by the creator and i think it's a short story collection and i haven't had the best luck with short story collections but i'm hoping since i already know i like this guy's writing then maybe i will like this more i don't know 
but I'm excited. <laughs> Next we have Her Majesty's Royal Coven as well as the ARC for the Shadow Cabinet by Juno Dawson. I bought this at the beginning of January and then this ARC was at my work the other day and I was like, well, I already have the first one, so might as well just pick up the second one. Do I know what this is about? No. Now, I did just read Juno Dawson's book, This Book is Gay, which is getting a lot of attention in the States right now because schools are banning it, and I honestly didn't love the book, but I am quite sure I read the original version, and I know it's been updated since she first wrote it in 2014. A lot of it seemed very dated, but I don't think I read the right version. So I definitely still want to give her writing a chance. And I've heard a lot of really good things about this. Again, do I know what it's about? No. <laughs> I think it's adult, um, I almost said romance, adult fantasy. Four young girls took the oath to join Her Majesty's Royal Coven, established by Queen Elizabeth I, blah, blah, blah. Oh, witches. That's all I know. And then this is the sequel. And if I like this, then I can read this one. And it's good because I didn't spend any money on this. So it's good. I don't know. But I have those now. <sighs> okay, let's keep going. Next, <laughs> another book I picked up at the beginning of the year is Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. First of all, this cover, again, stunning. How many times do I have to say that? I don't know, but <laughs> we love it. Again, do I know what this is about? No. I think it's literary fiction. In present day California, Eleanor Bennett's death leaves behind a puzzling inheritance for her two children, Byron and Benny, a traditional Caribbean black cake. Oh, black cake. <laughs> Made from a family recipe with a long history and a voice recording. In her message, Eleanor shares a tumultuous story about a headstrong young swimmer who escapes her island home under suspicion of murder. The heartbreaking tale Eleanor unfolds, the secret she still holds back, and the mystery of a long-lost child challenge everything the siblings thought they knew about their identities and themselves. I mean, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the swimmer in the story is actually Eleanor. <laughs> I've heard great things about this. I'm pretty sure it was nominated for a Goodreads Choice Awards last year. So I picked it up. I don't know, like the reason I picked most of these up is because I just was intrigued for whatever reason. I don't really have much to say. <laughs> I'm sorry if this is getting repetitive. We still have so many books to go through, so I'm gonna start speaking up a bit. Okay, let's go. Next, All's Well, Mona Awad. We all know Mona Awad, she wrote Bunny. I'm not really interested in Bunny, not because it's weird, but because I heard it's kind of gross and I do not do gross, but this seems way more up my alley because it has to do with theater. And I know she writes like weird horror, but I'm learning that I'm okay with horror as long as it's not like slasher or gory horror. But if it's like psychological horror, then I kind of like that. So I don't know if this is classified as horror, but Evelyn likes it. And if Evelyn likes it, then I hope I do too. <laughs> Speaking of horror, next we have We Spread by Ian Reid. This, did this win the horror category? It might have, I'm not sure actually. But this is about, what is this about? <laughs> oh, it's blurred by Ruman Alam who wrote Leave the World Behind, which I loved last year. And I think someone has dementia or something. That's all I really know. But I've heard the writing is just really beautiful and everyone loves this book, so. And everyone also cries reading this book, and we all know I love to cry, so I can't wait for this. Next we have two books that one day I went into Indigo after a class, and I was sad, so I bought some books. <laughs> and there were both books I had never heard of before. The first one is The Ophelia Girls by Jane Healy. What is this about again? In the summer of 1973, Ruth and her four friends were obsessed with pre-Raphaelite paintings and their fictional tragic heroines, and a little bit obsessed with each other. By the end of the summer, though, real tragedy has found them. 24 years later, Ruth is an unhappily married mother of young twins and 17-year-old Maeve, who is recently cancer-free. At the start of the summer, the family moves to Ruth's once grand home following the death of her father. And as the summer heat burns, a mother's buried past and her daughter's hidden present threaten to collide. How long can one family hold on? Now I remember why this intrigued me. And if it's like something with the summer, maybe I could read it this summer? I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> And then in that same trip, I got The Reckless Kind by Carly Heath. And I remember this had a lot of queer characters. And I think one of them might have been Ace. Wait, what does it say? It's 1904 on an island just west of Norway, and Asta Headstrong doesn't want to marry her odious betrothed Nils? Nils? 
but her mother believes she should be grateful for the possibility of any domestic future given her single-sided deafness, unconventional appearance, and even stranger notions. Oh, so we have deaf rep. Asta would rather spend her life performing in the village theater with her fellow outcasts, her best friend Gunnar Fugelstad, and his secret boyfriend, wealthy Erland Fournier. Fournier? I don't know. <laughs> but the situation takes a dire turn when Niels, Nils lashes out in jealousy, gravely injuring Gunnar. Shunning marriage for good, Asta vows instead to live the life of her choosing along with Gunnar and Erland. With few ties left to their families, they have one shot at gaining enough money to secure their fo uh, future, win the village's annual horse race. Despite Gunnar's increasing misgivings and difficult recovery, Asta and Erland intend to prove this unheard of arrangement will succeed. But the more they defy small town tradition, the stronger their villagers' hateful ignorance becomes. With his ears competition proving dangerous for the reckless trio, Asta and Erland <laughs> soon find they face another equally deadly peril, the possibility of losing Gunnar and their found family forever. Found family. I, I swear, I think the main character might be Ace. I, I seem to remember looking this up and people saying I had Ace rep. So if you know, please confirm. But at least we know this is queer and it sounds, I don't know. I haven't heard literally anything about this. So if you know anything, let me know. Next, <laughs> we have The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay. This is one of Kayla's favorite books from last year. And something about it just really called out to me. I know it's a mystery. Is it a thriller though? I don't know if it's considered a thriller or is it a horror? I don't remember. But I do remember <laughs> that um, someone is telling the story and then someone else is like, can you even see that? Is writing over the story in like red ink to like correct it. So it's kind of like Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter, but you know, obviously not the same because it's mystery or thriller or horror. I'm not sure what, but I've never read Paul Tremblay before and I want to branch out and read more mystery or thriller or horrors. <laughs> so I thought I would try this one. We'll see how it goes, but I've heard a lot of good things. So I'll hope for the best. Okay, next we have a manga and that is Komi Can't Communicate. Um, by Tomohito Oda. This is volume one. I only got the first volume because I don't really know much about this so in case I don't like it I didn't want to just buy like five volumes and then it turns out I don't like it but all I know is that this girl is anxious and that's all I really needed to know. Her greatest dream is to make some friends. Everyone mistakes her crippling social anxiety for cool reserve so everyone keeps their distance. Timid Tadano is a total wallflower and that's just the way he likes it but all that changes when he finds himself alone in a classroom on the first day of high school with the legendary Komi. Oh my god. <laughs> He quickly realizes she isn't aloof, she's just super awkward. Wow, what a mood. Now he's made it his mission to help her on her quest to make a hundred friends. Aw. That sounds cute. So, I don't know. I'm just excited to get to this. Oh my god, my legs are falling asleep. The way I'm sitting right now. <laughs> I wish you could see, but I might as well talk about these books next. So, can I hold them all up? So, I got all of these. Uh, what are these, you may ask? Let me tell you. These are the new editions of the Throne of Glass series. I have read the first three books in the Throne of Glass series and I really like this series so far. I think it's really fun. Honestly, it's my favorite thing, I think, that I've read from Sarah J Maas because I read the first Akatar book, didn't love it. I really liked House of Earth and Blood, but not so much House of Sky and Breath. But the three books I've read from Throne of Glass I really liked. So, <laughs> and the new editions are really pretty. Like I know the the original editions are like classic, old school, you know, nostalgic, but I only read the first one like two years ago or three years ago. So they're not as nostalgic for me. And I just really liked the way these looked. So, and you'll notice that Assassin's Blade, is that what it's called? The short story collection, you'll notice that that's missing. I do not want it. I do not want to read it. I do not like short story collections <laughs> of already existing series. We knew this. So I got Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and finally the chonker that is Kingdom of Ash. All by Sarah J Mass, obviously, but look how big this one is. It's so big, but I really love these covers and I haven't decided yet if I want to reread the first three and then continue on with the series because I kind of want to like annotate them and highlight them and stuff or if I just want to continue on but I think rereading the first three would not take me very long but also there's so many other books I need to read as we can see. <laughs> 
So we'll see. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. The next book I have here was actually uh, another birthday present, but it arrived a bit later after I filmed my birthday book haul, so I didn't get to talk about it in that video. So I wanted to mention it here, but that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, and this was gifted to me from Ansu. So thank you so much, Ansu. This is the first book in the Last Hours trilogy, and I'm very excited to get to this book. If you don't know, I'm hosting a Shadowhunters read along with my friends Lisa and Casey. We started at the beginning of 2022. We are, well, I'm currently reading Queen of Air and Darkness. I'm a little late, but the April book is Red Skulls of Magic. I think we read this. I know we've discussed this so many times. I think we read this in June or maybe July, but I'm very excited to get to this series. I've heard great things. I mean, I haven't heard great things about Chain of Thorns, but I've heard great things about the first two. So especially this one. And I know Lisa's excited, so I can't wait. And it's really pretty. And I love these paperbacks, so thank you so much, Ansu. <laughs> okay, next, this was also kind of a cover by, but that is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Now, this is another adult high fantasy, I think. Do I remember what it's about? Not really. Um, Luli Al-Nazari is the Midnight Merchant, a criminal who, with the help of her djinn bodyguard, hunts and sells illegal magic. When she saves the life of a cowardly prince, she draws the attention of his powerful father, the Sultan, who blackmails her into finding an ancient lamp. Aladdin? <laughs> with no choice but to obey or be executed, Luli journeys with the Sultan's oldest son to find the artifact. So it just seems like a very, like, classic fantasy story, and I love this paperback. It has purple on it. Like, come on. Also, it's floppy. Like, <laughs> what did you expect from me? <laughs> okay, so these next ones have a story behind it. So, I still get emotional <laughs> thinking about this. But way back on Valentine's Day, what my boyfriend did was he messaged three of my besties. He messaged Lisa, Casey, and my bestie Salma, and he asked them for book recommendations for me. And what he did was he took each of their recommendations and wrapped each of them with a framed picture of us. <laughs> so let me show you. So Lisa's recommendation was The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. And then this is the picture he gave me with it <laughs> when I met Lisa. And I actually already read this and I really enjoyed it. But hopefully I'll talk about this in some sort of wrap up. I know I haven't filmed a wrap up in ages, but I'm hoping to do like a rapid fire wrapping up all the books I've read so far this year, but yeah. So I have this and this picture of Lisa. <laughs> and then from Casey, she chose You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. And then he gave me this picture. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Uh, let me tell you, I cried a lot when I opened this gift. And then my bestie Salma chose My Oxford Year by Julia Whelan, and this is the picture. This was at the Phoebe Bridges concert. So yeah, so thank you so much, Sean, for doing this for me. He also, I need to show you guys this, he got me this bookmark. If you know what this is. <laughs> it's the, I think they're called Borzois, 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 um, on TikTok, and it has the like, for you, you know that sound? So he got me a bookmark like that, which is so cute. So yeah, so thank you so much to Sean for getting me those and thank you to my besties for going along with his little plan. I was very emotional, <laughs> but that's just the sweetest gift ever. So I'm gonna definitely have those pictures up on these bookshelves and yeah. I love it so much. So moving on from that, <laughs> then we have one of the good ones by, oh, where is it? Micah Malit and Maritza Malit. And I thought this was kind of like literary fiction. I know it's about this teen girl who was a social activist, but then she is killed under mysterious circumstances and her sisters are trying to figure out what happened, but apparently it's a thriller. So I'm very intrigued now to see what this is all about. Okay, my memory card is gonna be full soon, so I'm gonna try to go through these ones quickly. So next we have another arc. It is Clytemnestra by Costanza Casati. This has already come out. I think it came out in March. It is another like Greek myth retelling. I don't know much about it, but the arc was at my work, so I picked it up. Then we have another book I bought uh, when I went to Indigo one day after I was sad after class and I was like, I need a book to make myself feel better. So I got If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. I've heard a lot about this book. I think it's like a commentary on beauty standards in Korea, I think. Yes, Korea. And I know Reagan from Prue's Project really loves this book and it's very short. And I love a good like literary fiction every once in a while. So 
I got it. I don't know. The cover's really pretty. I got it. Then I got another book that was on, I think, my March TBR, unless it was my February TBR, but that is Hold My Girl by Charlene Carr, and this is about these two women, and they both go through IVF treatment, and one of them uh, gets pregnant, the other one doesn't, and then after the babies are born, they realize that the eggs were switched or something. So it's a very intriguing concept, and I haven't heard if anyone has liked this or not. I mean, this book, like, just came out, I think, so... I'm very interested to see what I think of it, but it's very intriguing to me. Then we have another arc. <laughs> Everything's fine that I got from work. It's called All Alone With You. What is this about? <laughs> oh, it is Grumpy Sunshine. I remember now. It's Grumpy Sunshine, but it's the girl who's grumpy. And I think the main character is also bi. I just know it's queer in some way and it just sounded cute. Um, so I don't know. I picked it up. And I'll read it at some point. Next was actually sent to me from Sid, from Sid Bookworm, one of my besties. It is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies um, by Heather Fawcett. This is the beautiful fairy loot edition. Look at this. Look at this. And she read this and didn't love it. And so I was like, do you want to sell me your beautiful fairy loot edition? And she was like, okay. So she would not accept my money. So I sent her some books. <laughs> In payment for this um, but it's just beautiful and I don't know if you could see because of the sprayed edges but it has some her tabs in it and she annotated a bit she also left this cute note inside like what the heck Sid I love you um, it's also signed like I'm very I'm just very excited what is it about I mean, something about fairies I don't know but it's just really pretty and I wanted it so <laughs> thank you so much to Sid for sending this to me okay I'm sorry I'm going fast I'm trying not to run out of battery but the next is The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty this is the author of the David Bad trilogy which I have not read yet but I will read it at some point and this is like a seafaring adventure I don't know what else. There's a tentacle guy. I, and I heard really good things. Rashani Chakshi, Fonda Lee, Ava Reed, Ayana Gray, Wesley Chu, Tasha Suri. Like everyone blurbed this. So it's probably gonna be really good. And I like the cover and it was $30, but I had a discount, so it's fine. <laughs> okay, we're almost there, guys. Next is Tress of the Emerald Sea by, I almost said Shannon Checkerbirdy, by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first of his like secret projects, to be honest. Do I completely understand what those are? Not really, but I know this is part of the Cosmere universe, but the only book I've read in the Cosmere universe is The Way of Kings, so, I don't know if there's gonna be like stuff in this that I don't understand but I've heard it's really great and I liked this cover it's not as nice as the like special edition you got if you signed up for his Kickstarter or whatever it was but I do still like this cover and I've just heard great things and I like his writing and so we're gonna give it a try okay we're almost there guys next I got da -da -da! <laughs> a day of fall and night by Samantha Shannon. This is the prequel to Priory of the Orange Tree, which is one of my favorite books. I wanted to initially reread Priory before reading this. I don't think that's gonna happen because Priory is very long and so is this book. So this book also came out on my birthday and I was like, oh my god, perfect. But then in the Indigo site went down. So this didn't get delivered until like two weeks later. So I was like, wow, rip. But I'm very anxious to get to this because I loved Priory so much. I haven't seen many reviews of this so far so I'm very interested to see what I think about it and I'm gonna put it down now because it's very heavy and it's hurting my back. Okay and finally perhaps the best books I have to haul for you today are the fairy loot editions of Legendborn and Bloodmarked. Just wait for it. Whoppa! Look at these spray edges. Oh my god. Oh my god. So beautiful. Look at this one. Ooh stunning. Wow. And papers. My babies. That's the- oh my god. And also the naked book. I forgot about the naked book. Like look at this. Look at this. It is just- I am so happy I ordered these. Like these were definitely- it was expensive but I think it was worth it because these are- can you go back on the book please? And then there's also- I'll show you this one. Exactly. So pretty. I'm so happy. And I think I'm going to keep these on these shelves down here and display them down here. Now, I don't know what my filming is going to look like. I think I'll keep filming in my room because I like my little setup there. 
but I will be organizing these shelves sometime soon, so stay tuned for that video. Sean is very eager to help me with that, so that should be fun. But those are all the books <laughs> that I had to haul for you guys today. I hope you liked this haul. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them, which ones I should prioritize. I am very excited about all these books and about these bookshelves. And thank you to anyone who sent me any of these books. I am very grateful and I am very excited to be back making videos. Hopefully semi regularly, we'll see. But yeah, thank you guys. I'm so tired now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Hopefully. Bye.